All right, guys, welcome to Performance Farms channel. I'm John Rodriguez. In today's video, we're going back to, of course, Project Garden Salsa, the 6.5 build with GCP rifles. I decided to go with the 130 RDF, and the reason I did that, uh, we'll get more into details, but basically has really excellent BCs, and I can get the velocities that I want, and I think it can outperform the 140 grain out to a certain distance and that's pretty much what I wanted um, that being said we're gonna do the first steps that I do and guys I know there's a hundred reloading videos and a hundred different ways of doing load development and some of these guys that are bench rest rifle guys they get crazy minute uh, crazy into details and and just go too crazy with this so it's just gonna be a simple um, simple load development that I do the first steps that I do to figuring out what powder charge and we'll work about seating depth later on I may not have to do seating depth if I get good groups um, I know that on a lot of videos guys the first thing they tell you to do is to figure out your um, your free bore or figure out you know your jump how much to the lands and how much to that I don't have that tool um, another way of doing it is to go ahead and just you know start measuring it in little by little until the bolt closes smoothly uh, we can do that as well but Honestly, I've never done it, and I really don't need to do it. Um, and the ammo that I'm loading, uh, I want to be able to use in a bolt gun, which I'm able to load longer, or in a uh, gas gun, which I'm stuck to the 2.8, uh, 2.5, 2.820 uh, range. So I want to be able to shoot it in a gas gun and shoot it in a bolt gun and have no problems. Now, I have worked up a load for a 6.5 before. It was, of course, the spike tacticals roadhouse video which is uh, on my channel uh we did the same bullet the 130 rdf we did uh, the powder was hodgins h4350 and we did about 43.4 grains of that guys and again with this load data you gotta work up to it every rifle is different so i worked up with that i'm gonna work up with it on this rifle and see if i get any pressure signs as well but with that with the 22 inch barrel gas gun i got 2879 uh which shot it shot amazing it was a really tight group so i'm um, that's pretty much where i'm gonna be I, i'm when i did the math i figured i'd be about 40 feet per second faster in this because of the barrel length but other than that so we're gonna do the ocw test or a modified ocw test 10 shot ocw test uh which is probably going to be less because to be honest with you i don't really care about the lower node uh, i care more about the higher nodes so i'm going to start on the higher end of the charge probably start I know that max is I think about 43 so I'll probably start about about 42 and a half uh, 42.6 because we're gonna go up in two point in two grain increments every two grains and then like that if I find a good node I can just load in between and uh, if I'm a grain uh, a tenth of a grain over a tenth of a grain under I know it's still in the node so that's what I'm gonna end up doing uh, we're gonna work on two powders today we're gonna work on Reloader 16, which uh, will give you the fastest velocities you can get, but I'm not sure about the accuracy. I've had, I haven't had any uh, luck with the Reloader series, except Reloader 15. I use Reloader 15 a lot in 223 and 308. I've had good luck with the Reloader 15. Um, I know after 2015-ish or 2017, they have made it more temp stable uh, from what I've read. So based off of that, um, I'm, I, I know Reloader 16 will get me really, really good velocities or the highest velocities I'll be able to get. Um, but I haven't had any luck on, you know, even with Reloader 17. I haven't had any luck with accuracy uh, when it comes to those rounds. So H4350 is another powder we're going to try. Uh, I have a little bit left. Uh, unfortunately, guys, because of the COVA or coronavirus bullcrap, um, my, uh, my brand new brass hasn't come in nor the uh another uh thing of h4350 i have a little bit left so i'll try to load as much as i can with it and then i have a little bit of 65 uh creedmoor brass that has been fired already i'm gonna try to work that out i don't have the pilot the number five pilot from hornady i ordered that as well i'm waiting for uh what is it midland mid south shooting supply to send that out uh, but i do have the projectiles here i got 500 130 RDS from centerfire.com or something like that. 
So that just being said, let's get on to it, guys. Uh, so just in full disclosure, I do live out in farmland. Um, I don't have a berm to shoot groups. Uh, but what I am going to do is what I normally do is on the side of my garage, I, usually, I have a small bullet trap and I shoot at a 45 degree angle into the bullet trap uh, with the chrono on. And that's how I get the initial uh, ballistic or the initial velocity data and pressure signs. And then from there, I know, you know, the, the, the long range range from here is like a two hour drive. So like that, I don't get over there and realize I have a bunch of ammo that I built that is high pressure and I can't shoot it. So we're going to test for pressures, do that here, figure out a load, and then I'm going to build a large group of that. And then I'll do accuracy testing with that. And then I'll start doing seating depth um, and see what gives me the best accuracy, you know, different jump lengths. All right, guys, so stay tuned. We're going to go to the reloading bench and we'll load up some 6.5, 130 RDFs. And of course, guys, I'll give you a full breakdown list of every powder charge and the velocity I've gotten. So like that, if you guys want to work up to you guys, you guys will know. So there'll be data posted. They'll also be uh, check the description below. There'll be data posted down there. So no more talking, loading, and then shooting. All right, guys. All right, guys. So welcome to the bench. Uh, I know it's a little bit on the dirty side. So we have our pieces here. Like I said, these have been fired a few times and they're not necessarily the, the best test pieces, but it's all I got. So it's either wait until they decide to do that or just put out some videos for you guys. Now, I have shot with that brass, I have shot the G9s, uh, 113 projectiles, I had about 50 of these. I still have some. Um, I did some load development with these, so these are pretty cool. I got these up to, I think, 3,060 feet per second uh, with Reloader 16, and then I think I got it with H4350. I got it up to, let me see the board. I think I got it up to like 3,024 3, or so. Uh, but it's a cool comparison. I wanted to see the difference. This is a 113 grain, 65 Creedmoor. And now let's test, let's check out the size difference or comparison with the 140 RDF. So they're pretty close in size lengthwise. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, pretty close in lengthwise. Um, it's just they're made out of different materials one has lead the other one does not so let's see the measurements on them okay the rdf is i don't know if you guys see that 1.3345 and then let me pick sorry guys the G9 bullet is slightly longer, believe it or not. Not by much, though. Uh, so it's a little bit longer. Let me see if I can get it more accurate reading here. Yeah, about the same. 1.346. So the G9 is a little bit longer. All right, so advertised BCs on these. Advertised BCs on the G9 is 0.585. G1 scale, and then this is, of course, this is the numbers for that. Uh, that's why I chose that. All right, so yeah, I'll be able to get the G9s a lot faster, but this has a slight higher velocity, and we'll see, we'll plug in the numbers to see where I'll end up. Um, and, I and I was able to get a little bit of pressure signs after hitting, I think it was like 44 grains of the, uh, of H4350, with those got me that velocity. All right, so, I'm gonna work the brass, make sure um, I'm using a full length sizing die from Hornady. Uh, I got a Hornady press and I'm just gonna work work all the brass, make sure everything is uh, full length sized. And then I don't have, like I said, my pilot head is not that. So I have them lined up and kind of where they're in the same uh, size area and then we'll just shoot them the way they go. And then I'll go up, uh, I'll start off at 42.6, 42.8. 40, uh, 43, 42, and 40, uh, sorry, 43, 2, and 43, 4, which is, uh, where I hit the, with 40 H, with, uh, H4350 is where I hit, um, I believe it was 28, 79, uh, feet per second, 
and a seven uh, seven point six SD. So we're gonna try that load out and see how that does. All right, guys. So stay tuned. I'm not gonna show the reloading videos just to keep the video short. Okay, so here's going to be the first load. This is going to be 42.6 and then going up by two grains all the way to 43.4. I'll let you know if I have any bolt lifts or any pressure signs. We got 28. 60 brass looks good no pressure signs I'm gonna go on to the next one which is 42 8 42 8 here we go no heavy bolt lift brass is clean and we got 28 90 All right, 43 grains is next. No heavy bolt lift. No pressure signs on the side. Slight cratering on the primers. Not too bad, we got 2906. All right. This would be yeah, 40, 43 2. No heavy bolt lift. Slide ejector swipe. Nothing too crazy. All right, last one. Um, to be 43, four. No heavy bolt lift. Slight cratering on the primer, nothing to be too crazy about. We got 29.30. Those are pretty good velocities. All right, guys, so we're back at the bench after the H4350. And wow, uh, exactly where I thought we would be. So I'm gonna do um, the exact same uh, grain loads or the exact same loads with just a different powder. So exactly the same, everything will be the same. Uh, so we'll start off at 42.6 and work our way to uh, 43.4 of Reloader 16. Mind you, that's not even near max, so I don't know if I want to tune that up a little bit and see if I can. Uh, I'll do some of these over. Uh, I'll do one at 44 and then work my way over uh, max on the next. But just to see, the, just, just the slight velocity difference between the same powders, the same powder charge, uh, so you guys can see. And I did see a slight... Uh, a slight flat spot uh, that we'll talk about later on in the video. All right, so let's go ahead and start with 42.6. All right, guys, so now we're going to test the uh, Reloader 16, exactly same load. So first one's gonna be 42.6 and then all the way up to 43.4. Here we go. I'll let you know if there's any heavy bolt lifts or anything like that.
no heavy bolt lifts, no uh, signs of any pressure signs. Still no pressure signs. That was 42, 8, 43. No pressure signs. And it's climbing little. I mean, that's not even a bad SD for. At 43, 43, uh, 43.2, there we go. No heavy bolt lift, no signs whatsoever of pressure, and we're at 29.80, is it? No, 28.90. Here. All right, this will be the last round. No pressure signs, no heavy bolt lift, nothing, and we're at that one went back down. So I think that might have been a bad, bad piece of brass there, guys. That happens sometimes. Like I said these brass have not been trimmed, so let's go work on the higher end of the spectrum because we weren't nowhere near um nowhere near low uh, or max so we're going to do that next all right guys so we're back at the bench the velocities were kind of slow weren't they not so what we're going to do is i wanted to i'm going to redo that i'm going to redo that um that last shot that 40, what is it, 43, 4, like that, I've, like I said guys, this isn't new brass, normally you would do this with new brass, um, so I'm going to try it again with a different piece of brass, see if I get a different uh, velocity reading, uh, I'll probably go with that one, because, like I said, um, I've had that issue with some of this brass where it has a little bit more um, volume on, on the inside, and there's no way to know unless I'm going to measure it, and to be honest with you, I'm just trying to get velocities and pressure signs. I already got a good load in my mind uh, for the H 4350. Now I want to redo. We're gonna redo 44. So this one's gonna be that 40 uh, 43 4, and then we're just gonna bump it up right to 44. So this is gonna be 44. 44.2 and 44.4. If if I don't hit any pressure signs by 44.4, then we'll go up one more and see where it's at. Um, let's keep getting zeroed out. All right, so let's switch the dies up. All right, so this one's gonna be 43.4. Gonna redo that one. So this is gonna be the last four shots of this load development. And um, so we're gonna redo that 43.4, 43.4. We're gonna go 44, which is the book max that I could find. Uh, then we're gonna go about four, four tenths of a grain over that. Um, and let's just see, I'll let you know what the brass is. All that good stuff, all right. So this will be 44, 44, I'm sorry, 43.4 redo. Here we go. No heavy bolt lift. All right, I'll check the brush right now before we go on to the next one. But as you can see, the velocity there is a lot different. Uh, the other one, I might have had a little uh, bad primer on that brass and leaked out. Alright, got a little, nothing crazy. Alright, so that one's good. I'm gonna go on to the next one, which is 
44, which is going to be, of course, max book, max load for this gun, for this load. All right, here we go. All right, no pressure signs, all clean. All right, no pressure signs. I got a little bit of a ejector mark there. Twenty, twenty-nine fifty-eight, guys. That's pretty, pretty good. Uh, nothing to really worry about that I've seen. Pressures on the brass. All right, last shot. So this is a clean piece of brass. I don't have any ejector marks or anything. Let's take a look. Take a look at what we got. Last shot of the day, guys. Let's take a look. 44.4. Here we go. Alright, now I want to have some heavy bolt lift on. So uh, That's going to be a no-go on that one. So we're going to... Yeah, got ejector swipe. So that's going to be too, too much of pressure. So, on the high end. All right, guys. So there you go. Those are velocity numbers. We'll go back to the bench and talk about it. All right, guys. So we're done with our small OCW test or optimal charge uh, weight uh, OCW, which means optimal charge weight test uh, for these two powders. All right, I got all the data here. So let's just go over the stuff that we found. First, 40H350. Um, the first shot, as you guys saw, was uh, 42.6, and we got 28.60. Now, if you look at, there's not a per se flat spot there. There's only one noticeable flat spot there, which is between 43 and 43.2, right? We're only going up about 8 feet per second-ish, 9 feet per second-ish. So that's, for me, considered a flat spot, considering that uh, between the two other grains, 42 8 and 40 uh, to 6 there's 30 feet per second difference and then on the other end there's another 15 uh, feet per second difference and I can't go any higher than 43.4 and I want to stay away from the 43.4 because I um, I know it's near the high end and there's no need to be there so the consistent spot is 43 to 43.2 uh, so that's where I'm going to be uh, I'm going to load 43.1 will be my final and then from there we'll start playing with seating depth and seeing you know what the bullet likes if it likes to be closer to the lens or if it likes to be uh if it likes more jump that's for 40 h350 guys that's probably the best load you're gonna get for uh this and mind you guys this is a uh, proof research 26 inch barrel so the velocities might vary um i know that uh we got nowhere near these velocities when i shot out of a 22 inch gas gun so uh 22 inch gas gun we were about 28.79 so uh, reloader 16 right so if we go look at the reloader 16 uh, there isn't a particularly uh, flat spot anywhere I mean there's some flat spots here um, definitely a flat spot between 43.2 and 43.4 uh, of 6 feet per second when I redid the test as you guys saw I redid it because um, I had a bad uh, primer pocket and I had some pressure leak out of the back, so it's not a big deal. Uh, mind you, I'm using brass that I've done multiple testing with and have been reloaded and uh, I have not been trimmed, which is the biggest thing. Uh, guys, I can't emphasize enough, trim your brass so that they're all the same. Um, and that's when I've gotten the closest SDs. But there is a slight spot there, about 28... Uh, so if I were to load 43.3, I'd probably be around the 28.90 range, 28.93, which is um, pretty slow compared to the H4350 at the same. Uh, but they're pretty close, pretty similar, so either powder will work. Um, but I definitely want to try on the higher end and see what kind of groupings I get and what kind of SDs I get once I get the new brass on 44. Point, uh, 40, between 44 and 44.2, so 
maybe 44.1 will probably give me about 29 uh 40 ish 29 30 ish mark so that's would give me some type of slight advantage we're going to plug that into the um geo ballistic next and see what kind of uh difference that would make so guys that those are the numbers um take them with a grain of salt do your own testing uh, but i got my load and part two of this video i'm waiting for some of the ranges to open up here they're supposed to be a local range opening up May um, May 17th I think uh, that may allow me to do some stuff if not I have to wait for my uh, friends at the PD at the police range to see when they're allowed uh, when civilians are allowed to go in uh, so I could do some training and testing with them so that being said guys thank you for watching the part one of load development for the project garden salsa the gcp beast rifle gcp rifles it's a beast i love it can't wait to shoot some matches with it uh first match guys have been announced june 6th at uh tradecraft in amakley florida i will be there so will the gcp crew um and some of my pd friends that go and shoot local matches with me all right guys so i hope you enjoy this video if you share um uh, if you like it please share uh with all your friends all right guys thank you it's hot as balls i'm gonna go inside have a nice uh glass of water and some lunch and then i hope you guys have a good day because i'm just i'm just beat guys all right so thank you guys for watching i hope you like share and subscribe and i'll see you at the range